What might you be married to at the level of your affections and devotion? In spite of our religious veneers, the Lord looks deeply into our hearts. Thank God for Jesus, who can change our hearts and consume them with the fire of His Spirit. Here's Dr. Jim Bradford with more on The Central Moment. I welcome you to Central Moments today. As we come into the middle part of Malachi chapter 2, we're coming to the second of six disputes that God has with his people. The temple had been rebuilt in Jerusalem under the preaching of Haggai and Zechariah. Now, decades later, Malachi shows up to address the spiritual drift that had now entered in. Yeah, they had the temple, but but it, even the act of worship had become a an inconvenience and a drudgery for them, and they'd lost their heart for God. And so um, in the first dispute, God's saying, you know, I love you, but I don't think you love me anymore, and here's all the evidence of it. In the second dispute, he's going to talk about intermarriage and then divorce and the prevalence of both of those. We're going to talk about intermarriage, first of all, today. Um, In verse 10, Do we not all have one father? This is Malachi chapter 2, verse 10. And don't we all have one father? And did not one God create us? So these are rhetorical questions to which the expected answer is yes. So so then why do we profane the covenant of our ancestors by being unfaithful to one another? I mean, if, if God's our creator... And he, we have share in common the fact that he's our heavenly father. In other words, if we're part of his people, uh, how come we can't get along with each other? Except he's not talking about just normal conflict within a church. He is, he is talking about, uh, about unfaithfulness at a more deep level. First of all, Judah has been unfaithful, verse 11. A detestable thing has been committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah has desecrated the sanctuary the Lord loves by marrying women who worship a foreign God. And so he will go on to talk about divorce, but but first of all, intermarriage uh, between uh, the people of Israel and the surrounding nations around Israel, the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Perizzites, all of these people. And this was not Sometimes people read racism into this. This has nothing to do with racism. There's nothing wrong with um, w- w- with uh, intercultural marriages as long as the dynamics of that marriage can work. But what was wrong, that when they married non-Israeli women, when men in Israel married non-Israeli women, those women brought with them their pagan gods into their homes, and always it corrupted Israel. We see this at the end of King Solomon. He was the wisest man who ever lived. But but what a tragic, towards the end, he, he, he said it, he loved foreign women. He couldn't stop marrying them. And he had hundreds of wives and they brought in their pagan gods until even the wisest man, this man that was a king of Israel, um, a man that God had chosen, um, he turned his heart to idolatry towards the end of his life. I tell you, you can have a PhD and still flunk at living. Uh, you, you, you can be the wisest man in the world and still have your hearts go after things that are not of God. This is why we're always paying attention to our hearts. This is why we're always walking the discipline of keeping the things of God central. So he said, Judah has been unfaithful. A detestable thing has come. They worship. They married women who worship foreign gods. And so in verse 12, as for the man who does this, whoever it may be, May the Lord remove him from the tents of Jacob, even though he brings an offering to the Lord Almighty. So sometimes we cover our hypocrisy with external religiosity. They still go to the temple. They still offer an offering, but they go home and they worship demons. So no wonder Paul says in 2 Corinthians 6, verse 16, what agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? We are You and I, as believers in Christ, we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live in them and I will walk among them and I will be their God and they will be my people. That's his will for us. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing and I will receive you. You don't worship the things of this world and then go to church and go through your rituals and try to worship me on top of it. You need to separate yourself from worldliness, 
from uncleanness, from the demonic things in life, and you need to serve only one God, and that is Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. Help us to do this. Help our hearts not to drift. Help us with our associations. Help us, O oh God, with our affections. Help us with all of the things that we get lured towards that replace you. And then we try to cover it over with, with a little bit of uh, religious activity in your name. My God, forgive us. Help us not to live double lives. Help us, O oh God, to come out from among them, be separate to you, and may you live in us, and may you fill us uh, as, as, as your holy temple, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.